Hey, this is Waylon from Swiftwood Bows, and I'm going to continue my um, bow building series geared towards beginners um, with my hickory flat bow that I'm going to make. Um, so we got the tools that we need, we got the wood that we need. So the next step is going to be um, laying out the bow, laying out the design of the bow on the stave. Um, if you have a stave, a hickory stave that has bark on it, um, you're going to want to remove that bark before we get to, to this step. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not able to show that part of the process because the stave that I have already has the bark removed. Um, but to do that, you would use a draw knife um, and carefully scrape away the bark, um, being really careful not to damage um, the actual first layer of wood. Um, when you do that, you'll notice that there's a soft layer of inner bark, um, also called cambium. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to get down to that cambium with the draw knife and then very carefully um, work away the cambium, um, either with the draw knife, if you can be really careful, or um, with, a, with a scraper um, until you're just starting to reveal the top layer of wood without damaging it. Uh, and as you can see, this stave has quite a bit of cambium um, left on it, and I'm going to be removing that later once I've got the bow laid out. Um, that way I don't have to spend time removing it um, from the areas that are not going to be a part of my bow. Um, right now it's not hurting anything. Honestly, I could probably tiller this bow out the way it is and not have a problem with the cambium, though it might start to crack and lift off later, so I like to get it off. Um, some people like to leave a little bit for like a camouflage effect and that's something you can do if you'd like um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove it on this but first we're going to talk about um, bow design and it's, it's one of the most important um, steps that you'll take when you're building a bow because if you don't match the design of your bow well with the piece of wood that you have um, then it's not really going to matter um, how well you do the rest of the bow making, you're still probably going to have a bow that's going to fail or um, not be as effective as you'd like. Um, so there's a lot of different designs out there um, and there's a lot of different types of bow woods out there um, and knowing how to match the right design with the right type of wood and the right piece of wood um, is really important and it really comes with uh, knowledge and experience. Um, so I don't expect you to have all of that knowledge, nor am I going to try to give you all of the knowledge that I have in this short video. Um, but I will talk a little bit about um, the properties of hickory and other um, comparable white woods and the design that I've chosen for this bow and why it's a good match. So hickory um, and other white woods like hard maple and um, white oak and um, hop horn beam and um, woods of that nature are um, all quite strong in tension. And tension is the, the quality of the wood um, to be bent but not break. Um, it's the strength of the back of the bow to hold up to being um, bent. And hickory especially is incredibly strong in tension. Um, it can take a lot of bending before it starts to splinter and break. Um, and so that's really the shining quality of hickory, um, is how tough it is um, and how strong in tension it is. Um, the other important quality, one of the other important qualities for a good bow wood is compression. And compression is the, um, the ability for wood to get bent and then spring back into shape without um, having the cells get crushed. Um, and retain the bend. And that happens on the belly of the bow, the part that's facing you. Um, the back of the bow is what does the tension work, and the belly is what does the compression work. And um, hickory and other white woods tend to be um, not that great in compression. Um, they do the job that they need to do um, if the bow is designed well, but um, they can't really handle 
bow designs where the compression is concentrated to a smaller area. So for example, an English longbow that has a rounded belly on a narrow bow, that's a, that's a lot of compression um, concentrated in a small area. And wood, wood like Pacific U or English U um, has a high compression strength that handles that, that bow design well. Um, but hickory would take a lot of set. The, the fibers would get crushed on the belly, the bow would retain its bend, and it would lose speed. Um, and so to counteract that, um, we tend to make um, white wood bows with a wide, flat belly. Um, and that will allow the compression force to get spread out over a wide area. Um, and so we're going to be doing a style that's called an American flat bow. Um, and that is going to have a narrow, stiff handle. And it's going to go out to a wide working limb. And that width is going to be maintained about halfway down the length of the bow. And then it's going to taper to a narrow tip. Um, It's a fairly simple, straightforward design. We're not going to be doing any recurves uh, or reflexing or anything like that. We're just going to make a straight-limbed, um, wide and flat bow that um, Hickory does really well with. Um, so now I'm going to show you how I draw out the shape of the bow on the back. Um, this is pretty much the only part of this process that is going to be kind of a build by numbers. Um, style of work. We can't um, dictate the thickness of the bow um, with numbers. We're just going to have to take what the stave gives us. It's going to start bending when it wants to depending on the, the strength and density of this particular piece of wood. So we're going to lay out the back of the bow fairly mathematically um, and then after we get done with that it's going to be a lot more um, intuitive. All right, I've laid out the bow already um, in pencil, kind of with a light touch, just so I don't have any hitches while I'm showing it to you. But I'm going to go back through and do it step by step um, and do it in a pen so it shows up a little bit better on the, the camera. Um, I don't normally draw on the backs of my bows with pen. Um, pencil's usually good enough, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So you could probably just do it with pencil. Um, that way you can um, fix things if you need to. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my stave. So the length of my stave here is 65 inches. And the length um, of the bow is really going to be dependent on um, how long your draw length is and what kind of weight you're expecting to get out of it. Um, so your needs for your bow may be a little bit different than mine. So for this bow, I'm hoping to get it out to 28 inches of draw length. Um, this stave is on the short end, I think, for, for getting that, um, that kind of draw length without taking set. So if I notice through the process of building the bow that it's starting to take a little bit of set, I might adjust my expectations either for the draw weight that I want to get out of it or the draw length. But right now, um, I'm estimating that I'd like to, to get about 45 pounds at 28 inches, and I think that this stave um, should be able to do that, especially with the width that we're going to give the, the limbs. Um, so I know my stave is 65 inches. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my pen and then I'm just going to make a line here which is the, the center of the bow right at about 32 and a half inches half of 65. I like to put a little C 
just to remind myself that this line is the true center of the stave. Now after I've done that, I want to establish another center line, but this time going down the crown of the stave. And so <clears throat> the way that you do this is going to depend a little bit on the piece of wood that you have. If you have a piece of wood that has um, some snake to it or some, some contour where the grain is, is not going in a straight line, it's pretty important that you follow the contour of that grain. And so your center line is going to need to follow the snake of, um, of the stave. And to do that, you're just going to have to um, use your hand. And I like to lock my hand against the side of the stave if the side of the stave is um, also following the, the grain. And then I just do my best to draw a straight line down the top of the crown of the stave. Um, this hickory stave is straight as can be, and so uh, I used a chalk line um, to, to pop a line. Um, so I've got it drawn on here. I'm just going to use this long ruler here, and I'm going to set it up where my chalk line was, and I'm just going to draw a straight line right down the center of the stave. If you have a straight stave, then this should do. If you don't, then you want to do it by hand and really follow the, the crown of the, the stave. Okay, so I've got my straight line. Now the next step I'm going to do is to lay out the handle. So I'll bring the camera in a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I've got my center line um, in the middle of the stave, and I've got my center line going down the crown of the stave. Okay, so I'm going to make one limb of the bow a little bit longer than the other, and that's going to be the top limb. So my handle is going to be four inches across. So if I put the two inch mark here on the center line, and I marked here at the start of the ruler and here at four inches. That would be a four inch handle, but that would make my, my limbs the same length, which is okay to do. Um, there are people, a lot of people who make symmetrical limbed bows um, and they work just fine. I've made them as well. Um, but I tend to like to have the top limb be a little bit longer and the bottom limb be a little bit shorter. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift this down by a half an inch so now I've got an inch and a half on this side and two and a half inches on this side. So I'm still going to mark here where the ruler starts and here at four inches. So I've got a four inch handle, but it's offset by an inch. So that means my top limb is going to be one inch longer than my bottom limb. If you don't like that or um, if you feel confused by that, um, it's okay to make both limbs the same length. And pretty much everything that we talk about from here on out is going to be about the same. The only thing that we're going to do is when we're tillering, we're going to make the bottom limb just a little bit stiffer. If you're, if you're building yours with symmetrical limbs, um, your tiller is going to be more even. But let's not worry about that for now. So we've got our 
the edges of our handle marked off. I'm going to put the ruler here, the top of the handle, and I'm going to measure a half inch to either side, which will give me the width of one inch across the top of the handle and at the bottom hand of the handle I'm going to do the same thing. Half an inch to one side, half an inch to the other side. And now I'm going to make a mark where the center of my handle is, not the center of the bow. So it's going to be, an, it's going to be over by a half an inch. Um, so here's the center of my handle. And I'm going to measure five-eighths to one side and five-eighths to the other side. So this is going to give our handle a little bit of a, a bulbous shape. It's going to be narrower at the ends and a little bit wider in the middle. Um, this is going to be a little bulkier than we're going to need it. Um, so I'm going to connect these dots here to draw the shape of my handle. My final handle is going to be slimmer than this, but I like to have a little bit of meat to work with. Um, hopefully you can see my lines here. have to forgive me swatting mosquitoes here. <sighs> okay, so hopefully you can see that. I've got my four inch long handle, an inch and a quarter wide in the middle, an inch wide on each side. And now the next step is to draw the fades. The fades are the transition from the stiff non-bending handle um, out into the, to transition into the limb where it's gonna start to bend. And we want a really smooth, even transition not an abrupt change, because if, if it's an abrupt change, um, that's a, a potential place for the bow to break. This area of the bow is under all, the most pressure of any part of the bow, the most stress. Um, the stress decreases as you get out towards the tips, and so designing the, the fades is, is pretty important. On this bow, we're going to do two inch long fades, so the distance from the end of the handle out two inches, I'm going to make a mark. And then at that mark, I'm going to make the bow two inches wide. So I'm going to go one inch to either side. And that makes for a two inch width of the bow. Hickory likes to be wide and flat. So now I'm going to connect these dots here from the end of the handle out to the fade. So I've got my handle and I've got one fade. I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. Two inches wide. Connect the dots. Okay, so we've got our handle and we've got our two fades. Now I'm going to move the camera down a little bit here. and we're going to draw the rest of this limb. So, from the end of the handle to the end of the stave is 31 inches. So halfway would be 15 and a half inches. So I'm going to make a mark there. This is mid limb. Now, for this American flatbow style, I'm going to maintain that width of two inches out to the mid limb. Um, there's other styles of flatbows, um, like a pyramid, 
where you would go from this two inches here at the fades and you would taper straight down to the tips. And that's another good style um, for hickory as well. But right now we're just going to do this American flat bow style. Um, so at this midway point on the limb, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to measure out an inch to each side. And then I'm simply going to take my long ruler here and I'm going to connect the dots. So we've got two inches from the fade out to mid limb. Now we're going to taper from this wide point here down to narrow tips. So I'm going to make my tips a half an inch wide. So I'm going to measure one quarter inch to each side to give myself half inch wide tips. And then I'm going to just connect the dot from this two inch wide mid limb down to half inch wide tips. Do that on both sides here. Now this is just getting us pretty close to what we want. It's probably going to be, when we're finished with the bow, it's going to be a little slimmer out here maybe. The tips probably won't be a full half inch wide. Um, but this gives us something to work with and it gets us really close to the shape that we want. Um, so I've already, um, I've already done the same thing on the other side. Um, it's exactly the same. The only difference is because um, the other limb is going to be 30 inches instead of 31 inches because we made this top limb a little longer. You're just going to measure to 15 inches at mid, mid limb instead of 15 and a half. Um, but everything else is going to be the same here. So here's our half inch tips. Tapering out to Two inches at mid limb, maintaining that two inches all the way to the fades, which transition down to one inch wide at the handle. The handle is going to be an inch and a quarter wide in the middle to give us that bulbous shape. You can see the other limb does the exact same thing. 2 inch long fades, 2 inch wide fades, maintaining that width out to mid limb and then tapering. So we've got the bow laid out on the back of the stave. Um, it's all ready to rough out to get rid of the extra wood outside of our lines. Um, that's going to be for the next video. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you're running into any, to any trouble um, at this stage of your build um, because something that I said didn't make sense or if your stave is different than mine and you're not sure how to accommodate your design, um, just let me know. Um, say something in the comments and I'd be happy to help you um, figure it out. So I hope that was helpful. Um, good luck with your project and stay tuned for the next video which will be uh, roughing out the stave and getting it ready to start bending. Um, thanks for watching. Take care.